All right, guys, this is a, a brief history of atomic theory. Theory. We'll go from the original thoughts of the atom to um, early 1900s, uh, but we're not going to get into the modern theory uh, in this class. So the atomic model started in 400 BC with Democritus, and really nothing happened till 1800s with Dalton, and then through the early 1900s with Bohr. So in Democritus, um, he was a Greek philosopher, and he basically proposed that all matter was something that was small and unbreakable, and too small to see. To see. Um, philosophers were the leaders in um, science, I guess you would say, or thought process during the Greek time. Um, they didn't really test their beliefs or anything like that with experiments, but they used reasoning um, to support their experimentation uh, or thoughts. Um, Democritus used the beach as an example. So from afar, the beach looks like a huge mass, but in, in theory and in, in reality, they're small particles of sand. And um, that was basically his reasoning why an atom was an, it is what it is. He proposed three different shapes. Um, fire had sharp points, so that's why it hurt you. Wine was spheres, it rolled around in the glass, and then clay were jagged. Um, and this is the reason why clay clumps together when it molded. So basically using his experience uh, to determine different atoms. Then came Aristotle, which is a lot more famous uh, Greek philosopher, and he developed there are um, four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. And this really never, nothing really happened until early 1800s with John, John Dalton. Then John Dalton, English, um, proposed that atoms, five things, um, all matter was made of atoms, Atoms were solid spheres. Atoms of different elements made different masses. Atoms were indivisible and indestructible. And atoms combined to form compounds. So those are the five things Dalton theorized. And he actually was pretty good. Um, C is true today. Um, and E is true today. And A. Everything's made of atoms. So we'll see why B and D are not true. J.J. Thompson came around, also English. Um, he started as an engineer, and then later on he changed to physics. And as he graduated, another Englishman um, constructed some experiments that will kind of guide him towards his discoveries. In 1875, Sir William Crookes constructed a glass tube that had two metal plates inside and he made a vacuum and when he connected the plates uh, there's a positive and negative terminal with a high voltage battery and he is he observed a glowing ray and this experiment proved that um, electricity was matter so you can see in this um, picture there is the Crookes tube and in this video,
show so that showed that Thompson discovered the electron based on his experimentation that it was lighter than hydrogen atom, which is a proton. Um, so it proved that charge that there is something smaller than a than an atom and it has a charge, um, a negative charge. And a few things you want to talk about with properties of positive and negative charges that when you have a positive and negative, they're going to attract. And when they are the same charge, they're going to repel. Okay, push away. So looking at the cathode ray tube, Thompson took tube and um, put plates on top and bottom. And when there's no charge, it just goes straight. So that proved that ray was matter because it was in a vacuum. Then you, when you put a charge in the plate, it, it repelled the negative and was attracted to the positive. So you can see in this picture that the beam is going towards the positive. Now, when you flip it, same thing happened. Um, the charge inside the tube went down towards the positive and then repelled from the negative. So from this, he concluded that um, ray was matter and it was attracted to the positive plate and repelled by the negative. So that means the matter inside was negative charged particle. Um, so Dalton's proposal that atoms were neutral in solid sphere disproved that because um, atoms were not neutral, and, or some new atoms weren't neutral, and they weren't um, solid. They actually had particles within each other. So he proposed his own um, model that had... Um, positive cloud and negative charge particles and it's called a plum pudding model. Um, so the plum pudding is basically a dessert they had in English time and the raisins inside it were the negative charge electrons and the matter the matter around it was positive. So that's the example of the plum pudding model. Um, again it was a popular dessert back in the day and um, Thompson's model lasted less than two decades um, because the first proposed ex ex existence of a subatomic particle in 19... Um, where is this? There you go. 1911 um, also helped improve the atomic model, which was Ernest Rutherford. So Rutherford was born in New Zealand, New Zealand is a quick kiwi um, and he worked with alpha particles which is a type of radioactivity and um, he used these alpha particles to investigate the structure of the atom and uranium a radioactive element that gives off alpha particles he used to investigate the makeup of the atom um, so basically he encased uranium in lead because lead uh, absorbs alpha particles, and it proved to be a straight line to go through and hit this dense metal, gold. So he had a thin piece of gold metal and a screen to detect where the alpha particles were going. So you can see in this picture that the screen was surrounding the whole gold foil and the alpha particles were being emitted. So what happened was most of the particles um, went through the gold metal and some did not. And I'll show you in this clip.
So from the experiment, Rutherford was um, credited for discovering the nucleus, which is a very positive, dense center of the atom and um, very small compared to the overall size of the atom. Most of the atom is empty space and contained the electron cloud. Um, so his now disproved the plum pudding model and he used the planetary model, um, basically showing that electrons are moving in a orbit around the nucleus, just like the sun and the planets. So Niels Bohr comes along in early 1900s and he discovered energy levels. So it's kind of like the planetary model, but different levels of the orbits. Um, this is a model that is instructed in class that majority of people understand how a atom looks like. It's not completely correct. It's a good model to start with but then you go deeper into the energy levels into another model um, called the quantum model um, or molecular orbit or molecular um, orbital theory. So, but that's another class. And right now we'll just focus on the Bohr model, which shows that electrons are arranged in different levels um, and will change based on the chemical and physical properties of that element. James Chadwick was the last one discovered. The third was the last subatomic particle to be discovered. Um, it was the hardest one to discover because it's neutral and it's called a neutron. Um, so what he basically found out was that the mass was not correlating enough between the atom and the protons. So therefore he deduced and proved that neutrons were in with the nucleus, um, with the proton in the nucleus to cause the mass to be more balanced. Um, so that's the last uh, subatomic particle, James Chadwick. Um, and that is the brief history and um, all set.